Get out your popcorn, EpiPens, and golden wine goblets. The Love is Blind Season 6 reunion is here, and it was spicy. I should have been on the front porch waiting for your ass at 6 a.m. is what I should have been okay. doing. You've never taken accountability. You've never, you're a clown, okay? Saying that I'm a pick-me girl, you're the pick-me girl. Right, you're the pick-me girl. You're the pick-me girl. Don't you actually, you saw me you crying with my heart broken. I'll have my moment. You saw you me have crying your with my heart and broken. Have... And let me tell you, the Love is Blind people were taking notes. They have learned their lessons from the less than stellar reunions of the past. They have been listening, and this time around, they delivered. Well, for the most part, I do have a few gripes. So at this reunion special, the pod gang from season 6 is meeting up approximately a year after the show actually filmed, while also featuring special guest spots from some of the franchise's success stories plus these two. And to no one's surprise, Johnny and Amy are still together, Matthew is nowhere to be found, and Jeremy is wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Oh, and speaking of Jeremy... I am seeing someone. Funny you should mention that she actually is here today. Oh, Let's shit. please welcome Sarah Ann to the show. Yay. Oh, not the kid. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> now as for Laura, well, she had to work, so they zoomed her in from Spain, much to Jeremy's dismay. And you knew this was going to be a different reunion where production actually listened to what people wanted to hear, when Jeremy gets hit with this right out of the gate. Yet there's a third woman whose mother went on social media and said that you two were actually engaged mm -hmm. while you were applying for this experiment. So what do you have to say? It's not true. I was previously engaged. Everybody I dated was well aware of that. Now this is something that Laura actually backs him up on. Because while Jeremy says he was engaged, he also says he wasn't engaged when he went on the show. And both Laura and Sarah Ann say that Jeremy told them that when they were in the pods. However, that is not what Laura's still upset about. As the conversation then steers to Jeremy's location sharing 5am night out. Had I not woken up, he never would have admitted talking to her or going to her house in any way, shape, or form. Sarah Ann was actually telling other people the exact same lie, so they had corroborated on that. Well, this then devolves into a screaming match where Laura and Sarah Ann call each other Pick Me Girls, which is kind of wild considering one of them walked into the reunion looking like this. I can't feel my face. He had told her that night when they stayed out together that he was going to break up with me. So he spent all day with my family, all day telling me how much he loved me. Kid Why are y'all shaking your heads? We literally have the receipts on this one. What did he tell you? He told me that he's breaking everything off, and I was like, okay. And basically, Laura doubts the whole thing, saying, you're telling me that you were all in on me, and then suddenly you went out to a bar with Sarah Ann and had a conversation so good you decided to end our relationship then and there? At which point, they then show this never-before-seen footage of Sarah Ann and Laura at the barbecue, where, as Laura says, it's almost weirdly like Sarah Ann was asking for advice about her new relationship with her man. Like, you think he's, like, an all-talk... And then, like, 100%. once you're in the situation, 100%. really, I don't believe a single word that he says. I think he was a literal f***ing clown robot in the pods. And honestly, I don't think there was a single person on that stage that was with these two. As new beef starts to emerge with pretty much everyone, like here with Jeremy and Jimmy, when Laura says... The guy likes attention. Since he, that night happened last Saturday, all he's been f***ing talking about is his image and how he looks worse than Jimmy. So, I don't know why the f*** he came on this show. To which Jimmy is like... Oh. Now, Jimmy then recalls what this was probably about, as when he was in the pods trying to make his decision between Chelsea and Jess, all the other guys were trying to pick him up, while Jeremy was saying stuff like... At least I can sleep tonight knowing Jimmy's the villain. When I had a decision okay. to make... I don't recall saying that, but if I did say that, I was... Clearly it was on your mind. You're still talking about me and your own relationships and stuff. That's how you viewed me. And pretty much this whole cast has their pitchforks out for the jet ski king and queen, as the two have been completely ostracized from the rest of the group. How does your relationship with them stand today? Mm. Um, I don't talk to any of the women. That's because she liked to unfollow us and still follow our fiancés at the lake day, which I thought was strange. 
But you know, Sarah Ann is not here to make friends, so she's going to throw down with each and every one of these ladies. You saw me crying after he broke up with me and I said, I feel gaslighted and I was heartbroken when I left and you watched me bawl my eyes out and you defended him. You were never a girl's girl. He Ever, honey. Being, being the loudest oh, in the room does not make you the most noticeable. It doesn't matter. I'm not trying to be loud. loud. It's not about that. I'm always loud. So Y'all, she won't quit. It's like every time she finishes a fight with one woman, she turns to the next to like... I didn't hear no bell. Just curious if any of you have seen Jeremy in the subsequent time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. No? Oh. Every time I see him, they're broken up. Yeah. <laughs> you said they're broken. No, these updates. I can barely catch my breath, but they don't stop coming. My little heart can barely take it no more. But oh, we've only just begun. As once Jeremy admits that the night with Sarah Ann was wrong and should not have happened the way it did, and also apologizes for bringing the term bean dip into our lives, they then announce that Trevor's here to address his controversy concerning the secret woman he was dating the whole time he was on the show. And well, they then bust this man out like he's taking a Game of Thrones Walk of Atonement. Shame. 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 Damn, Trump. Shame. Oh, and production? Well, they come with the receipts, as they literally have this woman's texts. Show the receipts. I love you so much, honey. I'm excited for it, but more excited to get back to you after and start our life together. She responded with, did you land? Trevor responded, just did. Oh, they got this man stunned. All he can do is look down and pray that the floor will somehow give him guidance. Trevor then says, can I call you in 30 minutes? She said, I missed you so much. Trevor wrote, I love you more than anything in this world and I'm going to marry you. I hope you know how much I love you and had to pretend that this wasn't real life to say anything I said. So they then give Trevor the opportunity to respond, and the whole time he's just like... Nah, say it with your chest. <laughs> Don't get quiet now. Don't get quiet yeah. now. I, I had a whole thing planned to say. I don't know. So eventually Trevor comes out like... The thing is... I don't know what I'm doing. And that clearly shows when finally he mutters out, I was not dating her, dating her technically. Like I never said, will you be my girlfriend before the show started. Which had me like, oh. <laughs> Cause I mean, Trevor, I can read. I just read those texts five seconds ago, my guy. This woman wasn't your girlfriend, but you love her and apparently also said you're going to marry her? You trying to go from love is blind to married at first sight all in one day or something? Her and I were so f toxic. So toxic that after you got out of the pods, you that, said, I'm going I to marry would, you? No, that, I, yes, yes. I'm, I'm toxic as well. I, I admit that. Like, can I, like, just leave right now? So after some discussion on how him doing this takes away from those trying to actually be real on the show, which... <laughs> They let Trevor pull a Matthew and just get up and leave. At which point, they turn to AD and Clay. And here is something I wish they dug deeper on. Because they do go over a lot here in this segment, like how they did get in contact a few weeks after the show, how Clay has been working on himself in therapy, and how he feels like he didn't do enough work to understand himself and to understand love before going on the show, and that was a big downfall for him. But when he says stuff like... She's, she's honestly the love of my life, and I will tell you honestly, I did make a mistake. I apologize. I love you. You are the love of my life, and it was a mistake. I want to know if these two are still together. Like, is there hope here? Is this going to be anything? But they play it coy. Do you think you would ever date him again? Next question. Clay, <laughs> would you ever date her again? Thousand percent. Clay also says he sort of, kind of, but actually not really got that apology from his dad that his mom talked about after their wedding. Me and my dad have a great relationship in terms of our banter. It hasn't been like a, I'm sorry, but in his way, it has been. And I feel comfortable with his answer and who he is as a man. Oh, and they also touch on Brett from season four here because his relationship with Tiffany was the one Clay was talking about when he mentioned watching the show for the first time and seeing a man who was truly ready for marriage. Now from here, things turn to Johnny and Amy and if they've had their first fight yet. Have y'all had a fight yet? 
It's but okay, okay. Ask if they've had their first fight yet. However, what I really want to know is if he's had his first vasectomy yet, or better yet, have they had sex yet? <laughs> now from here, things switch to the alumni as they start asking questions and getting the cast to address stuff like Johnny's whole birth control thing, which he says came from a lack of knowledge on the subject, and if Jimmy's friend with one-time benefits was happy to have their secret let out on air. She didn't love hearing it. She was there for me. They felt one of them is really pissed off at me for mentioning it. It was also she had a, a an ex-boyfriend that she still hangs out with, she, she mentioned- I don't, I don't hang out with him. Oh, oh, are we starting? Is there another fight brewing like the good old days? Well, naturally, this then transitions into a discussion with Jimmy and Chelsea. But boy, did they let these two off the hook. I mean, Jimmy does say stuff like he should have ended the relationship after that you after fight, and he does address the following and unfollowing of Jess. I did follow her along with everybody else here at the same time, the moment I got my phone back. Um, yeah, I was eager to see her, I've already hit on that, but... But then we spend far too long on Jess being mad at Jimmy for an interview he did where he made her look bad by saying she stormed out after 10 minutes on their last date or something. Of course, the show then cuts in the actual footage where it's revealed that she left after 2 hours and 13 minutes. But I mean, come on, as this segment dragged on, I kept looking at my TV going... You said I stormed out in 10 minutes. I'd maybe give you 45 minutes. I don't care! Like, give me the hot questions for Chelsea. Give me the updates on these two, because are they together? Apparently, people have been spawning them together. But no, I have to go out and Google it to learn that they apparently dated for a few dates after the pods. Which still doesn't explain the photos of them at lunch or hanging out at a nightclub just the other week. And so this was another gripe of mine. Chelsea and Jimmy's relationship really got glossed over. I don't know, maybe they're trying to get these two back on Perfect Match or something, which Micah and Izzy are apparently going to be on, which they also announced at the reunion, so... Yay. And well, the reunion then starts to close out with a few updates. Like how season 1's Giannina is having a baby with Bachelor star Blake Horseman, in a moment that had me pointing to my screen going... It's a crossover! Also, Zack and Bliss are having a baby, and so are Alexa and Brennan, and I for one want to applaud Vanessa Lachey on her restraint all through this segment. Season 4's Chelsea then announces she's been hired as a casting director for the show, as apparently production pulled up to her one day and said, You have been promoted. <laughs> you are now one of my elite employees. So if you hate any future contestants, you know who to blame. And then finally, we do touch upon Kenneth and Brittany, where Kenneth basically says he was on his phone because he's a real hands-on principal, and so it was all work. But now these two are like crazy good friends. We speak nearly every day. Yeah. Um, well, one thing you know, he's always got his phone, so you can always reach him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, how could I forget one of the wilder updates from the reunion? Cause after they do this segment where they show Matthew's dates with Amber and compare it to his dates with AD. Cause I don't want to tell something to somebody else and then tell you something. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just not gonna do that. I asked you about your dad. Cause I really don't know if I could propose to somebody without asking permission. Cause if it got to it. Yeah. And we were at the end. Yeah. I would tell him I'm not doing it unless I talk to her dad. There's really two, only two outcomes from this. Yeah. And that's either with you or not. Oh. Well, after this, AD comes out with a bombshell update. Did you ever reconnect with Matthew in the real world after the show? Matthew and I, we went on a few dates. Well, the first one, he wanted to apologize to me. He ended up cooking me dinner. You went into his apartment? That's... A brave choice. Eventually, though, things fizzled and, whew, I am spent. This was a major step forward in the quality of these reunion specials. Now, was it perfect? Not quite. However, they sure were listening, and that gives me hope for the next time they do this. But for now, goodbye, Season 6. You were a hot mess, a lot of drama, and sometimes... You made me so uncomfy. So that's it for this recap of The Love is Blind Season 6 Reunion. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, comment your thoughts down below, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And until next time, Bachelor Fan Take. Out. You're Let's the pick me. You're the pick me girl. Don't you act? You saw me crying. I'm heartbroken. I'll have my moment. You saw me crying.